um, I graduated in 2011 from Kuku High um, and then I went on to become a registered nurse. I grew up um, in a loving and caring family and, and in the community of Kukwala. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Haynes. I graduated from Kukul High School in 2015, so it's a couple of years ago now, and I am currently doing my PhD in psychology down in Wollongong. Hi there, I'm Karen Waters. I graduated Kukul High School in the class of year 12 in 1998. And following that, I went to Sydney University and studied a Bachelor of Applied Science in Physiotherapy for four years, which I graduated in 2002. So for the last 21 years, I have been working pretty much full time in the healthcare industry. I'm also a mother of two children, um, a wife, and I have been a business owner for the last 13 years. Hi, happy International Women's Day. My name's Kelsey and I graduated from Crookle High in 2009. Straight after school, I moved to the UK for a gap year and pretty much had to grow up overnight. Um, I didn't see my family and friends for about 12 months. I got lost a lot. Um, I had a stupid Nokia phone that didn't have Google Maps um, and I was very, very broke, but the experience was well worth it. Um, when I came home, I moved to the South Coast and studied my bachelor's in media and communication studies with a view to move into health-based journalism. Um, I remember walking into my first lecture of about 200 people after finishing year 12 English um, in room six, I think it is, with five kids in our class and being really overwhelmed. Um, throughout that degree, I interned at the Cancer Council and completed an exchange overseas. Um, and I decided that I wanted to work a little bit more with people in health. So I went back to do my master's in occupational therapy or OT um, at Sydney Uni. So in my life, um, it's been really important to, to share the privilege and opportunities I've had with those around me and um, those overseas as well. I've been over to Africa and um, done some nursing work in uh, various countries and within that I've pr provided um, healthcare education so that women can um, take, be empowered and enabled to take more control of their health. Um, and I've also, um, it's been really important to me to um, be, a, be involved in communities who are marginalised and um, on the outskirts and to show them that they're valuable and cared for and loved and and I hope that that's been empowering for them as well. Um, um, I think my PhD is pretty cool. I'm looking at the experiences of women who are receiving treatment for opioid use. This is a really important area of research and one that I'm really passionate about. Um, we know that women's experiences of substance use and treatment differs a lot to the experiences of men um, and opioid use treatment in particular isn't really well set up for women. It's primarily been based on what men need in recovery. Um, so starting to look at women's experiences and what women might need uh, is a really important area of research that I'm personally really excited about. Um, so in my current role, I'm working um, with kids who are no longer living with their parents for one reason or another, or have experienced some pretty tough times in their childhood. Um, so within a team, I, I try and help those kids make sense of their different type of reality and I guess a different type of upbringing to what we're mostly familiar with um, and try and help them to develop life skills so that they can cope with change, um, they can have a pretty normal life um, and I guess have some stability and predictability in their world. Um, I'm the first OT in this position, so it's both equal parts exciting and terrifying. Um, part of my job is working directly with the kids, the carers and the schools around them, but the other part is really advocating for my profession, educating people on what OT can and can't do, and I guess being assertive enough to ask for a go when you haven't been considered yet. Sometimes those conversations happen just with my manager, which is one thing, um, but other times it's with the, the big, big bosses. In the workplace context, um, I'm still a bubba, no matter what my knees and back are telling me. Um, and when you're viewed as a junior and viewed as a junior female, sometimes it feels like there's a lot more pressure to get it right first go. Um, you learn pretty quickly that when you bring a different perspective to the way things are done, not everyone's gonna like it or get on board with it. So you learn to be pretty prepared, um, to develop some pretty thick skin, um, to back yourself, and that for change to actually happen, it's gonna take so much more than just one conversation or one email.
So I hope that, yeah, that you can just take the opportunity that, opportunities that you've been given and make the most of them. Thank you. So being a woman in a leadership role in the workplace has been an amazing experience for me. I think the balance of being a mum and being an employee and a leader gives a young woman a great opportunity in life to, to develop self-confidence, um, to have opportunity for both professional and personal growth. Um, this year's International Women's Day theme is technology and innovation. So there's nothing that a young woman these days shouldn't feel that they can't do. For those girls who might be graduating year 12 this year or finishing at the end of year 10 and wondering what is there for me outside of school, I would say do what you want to do and love what you do. If you have an innovative idea in technology, try to develop that. If you want to get a degree, if you want to be an employee, if you want to do a trade, there are so many opportunities out there in so many workforces which used to be male dominant, which um, now have just as many women or close to in the workplace. Um, and working in a gender equality workplace is an amazing opportunity to develop many friendships and have an amazing life opportunity that can help define you as an individual. So happy International Women's Day to all you young ladies who are watching this video. And don't be afraid to give anything that you want to do a go. Best of luck. Um, I've tried a bunch of different things since I left school. Um, I started in a double degree with law and psychology, decided that I didn't like law so I dropped out. Um, I then moved to Melbourne, started a full-time job as a psychologist, um, working with violent offenders, realised I didn't really like that either. Um, came back to uni to do a PhD and I think now I've finally kind of found my groove and found what I really want to do. Um, so I think that there is a lesson in all of that and something that personally took me a little while to wrap my head around, the fact that what you choose to do after you finish school doesn't always have to be what you do for the rest of your life. Um, it's totally fine to try different things, decide that you don't like them, um, and then do something else. I think um, it took me a while to kind of learn that progress isn't linear. Um, and just because you decide that you don't like something that you've invested time in doesn't mean that you've failed. Um, it's just that you're working out what you like um, and what works for you. And I think that living in a small town, it can be quite hard because I think for me at least, there was this expectation that, you know, you finish school, you go to uni and then that's the career that you're setting yourself up for. That's what you do for the rest of your life. It's definitely not the case. Um, I think that it's really important for you guys to know that if you decide to go to uni or uni's not for you, um, whatever you do after school is totally fine and it doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck um, in a career that you might not like. It's totally fine to change your mind. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I'm really honoured um, that I was asked to share a little bit about my experiences and my life um, for International Women's Day and I hope this helped a little bit. Um, despite living in a small town, the world is absolutely your oyster. You can do whatever you want to do and it's fine to change your mind. Um, like I said, progress isn't linear and if you're finding something that you enjoy doing then I think that that is an absolute win. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Happy International Women's Day. And I guess the story that I wanted to share encompasses um, all of all of the things I guess that I've learned since um, since leaving high school and I guess moving out of a small country town, um, uh, doing a bit of travel um, and living, um, I guess where I'm up to at the moment. Um, so me and two of my mates, one's from Wollongong, the other's from Young, um, we signed up to the Great Ocean Road Running Festival. So in South West Victoria, um, with a game plan of doing the half marathon. So this one was about 23 Ks. Um, we're, we're not the best on details. So one mate, um, she had registered successfully for the race that we'd intended to run um, on time before it sold out, she was good to go. Um, the other registered for a shorter run that was actually due to start two hours before our flight. 
got into Victoria and I just completely missed the cutoff time um, and it, the race was full. So I registered um, for the full, which is about Crookwell to Goulburn because um, I didn't want to miss out a on a holiday or miss out um, on putting the training that we've done to good use. So at the start line um, at sunrise on a Sunday morning in May, it's bloody cold. Um, I found myself feeling really underprepared, uh, very highly caffeinated um, on my own because the other two had managed to start halfway. Um, and just having that headspace of, you know, we're here now, we, we may as well give it a crack. Um, there's a weird feeling that I had and it, it, it's, it's that, you know, this isn't gonna be smooth, it isn't gonna be pretty. Um, there might be some body part that's not really functioning at the end, but I think I've got this. Um, and as uncomfortable as that feeling can be, it, it's somewhat familiar in that it's popped up um, at the start of lots of my life experiences. So, you know, first job interview, um, you know, 10th job interview, um, turning up to footy training for the first time on your own, moving into a share house, going to um, you know the first uni lecture of the year um, it, it's kind of it's it's always been there um, so this run it took about four hours so it ran from lawn to Apollo Bay um, and you've got the ocean on your left and the national park up on your right the road itself is pretty windy um, and hilly and I guess we copped every weather system possible um, in that four hour time frame so when you're on your own um, for about four hours, you're in your head the entire time. Um, I started to piece together that the ebbs and flows of a marathon, particularly one that has quite significant elevation, um, is not too dissimilar to the ebbs and flows of life. And I wrote down, I guess, what I took from that run in an Instagram post the day after when we were flying home. And I guess that's what I wanted to share today because um, I think it sums up a lot of the things that I've had to learn um, pretty quickly. Um, being, being out of home um, and away from family for a large part of the year. Um, so number one, your poppy collie's advice of taking one day at a time can be easily translated into one kilometer or one step at a time, particularly when things get lactic acidy. Good undies are everything. There'll be times when you feel like you can do four minute kilometers with the pack and other times when running six kilometers um, and running solo is where it's at. Both are okay, this race is your own. Find something to laugh at often, bonus points if it's at yourself. Some days it'll be raining and you'll be running up the hill into a headwind. All you wanna do is listen to the best of Green Day and some 41. Other days that hill will plateau, there'll be a sick rainbow and cascaders evacuate the dance floor will be your jam. Support can come in the physical form of a stranger's high five or their cheering or the generous offer of band-aids or talcum powder. It can also be felt through a text, a pic, or a tune. One of my mates um, sent me the Friends theme song at the 27 kilometer mark, which I found really helpful on this day. Your footy training singlet and your odd socks are running the exact same race as your Lorna Jane loving pals just across the road. You're worth so much more than what you look like or what you're wearing. Don't forget to snap a selfie for your folks at the 30 kilometer mark, especially when they thought you were only training 21 that day. They may call you at the most inconvenient times, text in caps lock and sign off every, every single message with 10,000 unrelated emojis, but appreciate the delight that they take in your life and thank them for the opportunities that you have while you still can. The ocean, the forest and the outback are great perspective builders. Remember that everyone approaches hills differently. This might be the first for some, the hundredth for others, or for one reason or another, this hill might feel like Everest to someone else. Judging's our easy default. Approach a different perspective and others' efforts with curiosity, which is gonna take a little bit more brain power. You can always learn a thing or two about how others develop their strength and resilience. The faster you go, the less you'll see. When you're proper cooked and at the end, so long as there's a couple of mates to share your pain, a dog or two to pat, and the prospect of a laugh on the horizon, odds are you'll be fine. Happy, uh, <laughs> happy International Women's Day. Um, take the time to celebrate each other's successes um, and enjoy all of the wonderful opportunities that being a woman can actually offer you.